Good morning, AP Macro students. Today's video will help us understand the changes for the 2020 AP Macroeconomics exam that will be administered online and also strategize to do the best possible job we can given these changes. Our last video integrated fitness with graphing. And while you will not be graphing on this year's exam, it is important to understand the content of those graphs as they may be referenced in the three free response questions that you'll be responsible for. Regarding the fitness piece, I strongly urge you to continue to do those exercises or other ones during this lockdown. It is difficult to stay mentally sound if we're not eating well, maintaining a schedule, and doing some form of physical fitness or conditioning. So whether it's jumping jacks, push-ups, uh, some other form of cardiovascular workout, make sure you're doing a little bit of that every day. All right, let's get to the 2020 exam. This year's exam is gonna be May 21st at 4 p.m. If for some reason you can't take the test that day online at your home, the makeup test is June 4th at 12 noon. I strongly urge all of you to take it on May 21st just because we are working towards that date. And our workbook activities along with online distance learning sessions like these will be getting you ready for May 21st. So let's take a look at the 2020 test format. You're going to have to do three free response questions. Question one is gonna be 55% of the test. It will be 25 minutes in total, along with a five minute upload period. Now, even though it's labeled question one, there will be two short free response questions within question one. That's how questions two and three on the free response typically went in previous years. So my guess is one will be medium sized that might take 15 minutes and one will be smaller that might take 10 minutes. Question two, which is more of the previous question one from years ago, will count 45%. It will be a 15 minute question along with a five minute upload. This is our traditional long free response question. As mentioned, here are some of the changes or modifications to this year's exam given the coronavirus circumstances. One, you will not be graphing. I repeat, you will not be graphing. Two, there will be no unit six content. It will only cover units one, through five. However, I am glad that we have covered unit six, which is international trade and foreign currency exchange, because you will use that later in life as early as next year in college. While calculators have never been legal during the exam, they are this year, although that would suggest that the mathematical calculations that will be required will be very simple and I would imagine fumbling with the calculator would only be a waste of time. However, you may keep it next to you along with any other resources. Scrap paper should be kept handy as the AP is suggesting that you may want to do some work on the side. My guess is there's going to be a certain amount of math on the exam that I'm going to go over in a moment. So those are the 2020 dates, particulars, and important changes slash modifications. I hope all of this makes sense. I strongly urge you to go to the AP Classroom. If you don't have an account, create one and utilize those resources along with any YouTube videos that College Board has downloaded. And as I have been harping on all year, go to old exam questions that do not have graphing in them. All right, let's look at our game plan or our strategy. Number one, I would expect short answer questions 
that assess the following content. And I will continue to assign questions like I did this week that require you to think about and factor in these topics. And you'll submit them to the Google Classroom as we move forward to May 21st. Number one, comparative advantage. While that may seem like an international trade question topic, it is not always. It might compare to people on a micro level or to companies and is not necessarily an international trade topic. Types of unemployment, where they might tell you someone has been fired or let go for a particular reason and you would have to categorize that as cyclical, structural, or frictional, possibly seasonal. We need to understand GDP transactions. For example, Newha buys 200 shares of Microsoft stock. Would that be included in GDP? We all know that stocks and bonds are not counted, but commissions are. So if her stockbroker, Adam Thomas, made $50 of a commission on that Microsoft stock trade, well, that commission would be part of GDP. So let's all understand what is counted in GDP. We have to understand the Keynesian multiplier, and while we may not be doing an aggregate supply, aggregate demand graph, we certainly must be able to figure out GDP gaps, whether it be a recessionary or expansionary inflationary gap and what the multiplier would be and how much money the government might input or inject in the economy through government spending or a tax cut. The Federal Reserve. Perhaps there's going to be questions regarding a certain amount of bonds they buy and how much that will filter into the economy or the reserve requirement and how much money will be expanded based on our notion of the 1 over RR formula. Of course, we have to understand balance sheets and T accounts, as well as checkable deposit questions by private individuals, not just the Federal Reserve. So Aiden DeSalvo makes a $1,000 deposit in ABC Bank if the reserve requirement is 10%, how much will that bank be able to lend out? How much will that lead to new money in the economy? And then there's a miscellaneous amount of topics that we must be familiar with. Please use your Barron's AP Review Book to see all of the different materials we're responsible for. Certainly something like inflation, who are the winners and losers, who is hurt, who is not hurt, what is real versus nominal. Oaken's Law, and a variety of other miscellaneous topics we must be aware of. So those are the details. I want to wish everyone a happy spring. Hope everyone's getting fresh air daily. I am signing off, reminding you that we are Neuro Strong.